Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make some divinity. And uh, divinity to me, uh, you probably shouldn't be making it if, it if you've got a humid day, but we're going to make it anyway, even though it's raining outside today, because I think we can still make it work. All right, so what you will need, I'll just tell you about the nuts first. This is one and a half cups of um, just pecan pieces that have been broken. Now, to enhance the taste of the pecans, I really toast them in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes so they turn slightly browner. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then I, I, I toast them, you know, in pecan halves and then I break them up into usually uh, each pecan half about a fourth of a piece. All right, so there are the pecans, one and a half cups. You'll need two and two-thirds cups of just regular granulated sugar. To make sure you get that right, two and two-thirds cup measured exactly, okay? Two-thirds of a cup of light corn syrup. Let me just show you that. And this is just Southern Home. Light corn syrup. It's really like Cairo syrup, only it's light. And this is the kind you mostly use for cooking. And I'm going to put just a dash of salt in, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, which we're going to put in at the end. You'll need two egg whites from large eggs, just the white. And you want to make sure you don't get, don't break the yellow or get any of that yellow in the egg white, because otherwise they won't beat up properly. And because it's raining today, I've got one half cup of water and I'm going to remove one tablespoon of that because of the humidity. So that's one half cup less one tablespoon if it's humid where you are or if it's raining. All right, so now we're ready to get started. So first thing we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my burner on high. I've got a large a pot. This is one of those Gordon Ramsay pots. It's got the thick bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, add the water first, then the two-thirds cup of uh, syrup. Let me turn this down where you can see. There. Let's come a little closer. There. All right. So we're going to get this corn syrup in there with the water. And I just use a spatula to get it out. Make sure I get it all out. All right. And then to this, we're going to add the two and two thirds cups of granulated sugar and just dump that in. Now, at this point, you're going to let this come up to a boil and you want to stir it just gently. Like, try not to stir it up on the side so any of those sugar. Uh, crystals get up on the side of the pot if you can help it. Now if you do, you'll need to take uh, maybe a little uh, brush just dipped in a little water and you know wipe it down so that you don't uh, cause this to crystallize. Alright, so we've got the burner up on high and I'm just going to keep stirring this gently until it actually comes to a boil. Now, once it comes to a boil, we want this to um, get up to the hard boil stage. And uh, uh, that's usually about 260 some degrees. And I might do mine a little less than that on the candy thermometer, but there's another way to tell. And that is once it starts boiling, you think it might be ready, just take a teaspoon and put a little drop in some very cold water. And if it gets very hard, you'll know it's ready. All right, so we're just gonna keep stirring this. And once this comes up to a boil, we'll be back. Okay, we're back and the uh, sugar and syrup mixture with the water has come to a boil. Now I wanna show you something on this. See how the it's boiling up past the point where I was stirring it. So I know there are no sugar crystals around that. Now, 
even the spoon you used, just put it in the sink or the dishwasher because the next time you want to make sure you've got a clean spoon. You don't want even one single little sugar crystal because it'll make the whole thing turn to sugar. Alright, so I'm getting out a clean spoon when I start testing this. Now, once it starts boiling, you don't have to stir it anymore. All we'll be doing is once it gets close to the temperature of 260 degrees, I'll be testing it in my, my water. Now, if you've got one of those um, temperature gauges where it, you know you put the probe in and the little digital thing shows up, that'd be good too. But I like to use my um, candy thermometer and I double check by just checking it myself in the cold water. Now, when you put your candy thermometer on the pot, you want to make sure that it does not touch the bottom of the pot because that will make the temperature appear hotter than it actually is. So just clip it on the side and make sure it's not touching the bottom and then just leave it alone. Now, while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and uh, beat my two egg whites till they uh, form soft peaks. And I'm doing this, this is a very old, uh, really, I think it's about an eight cup measuring thing. And um, I, use it, I use this because it's more narrow. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dump our egg whites in and I'm going to go ahead and beat them to the soft peak stage. Now while I'm thinking about it, because this is something I tend to forget, I'm going to put just a dash of salt in this one. That's it, just a dash. All right, so the only other thing we'll have to add will be the vanilla as we're beating this to combine the two. All right, I'm going to go ahead and beat my egg whites and when this uh, liquid here gets to 260 degrees, we'll be back. All right, I wanted to come back just a minute to show you all this. It's sort of gone down a little bit. And I'm actually going to turn my heat down to medium. You don't really have to do that. But when it gets to just almost at the hard wool, uh, hard ball stage, you think it's just going to take it forever because it just takes it a long time then to get up to the next few degrees. But what we're going to do is go ahead and test this. And I'm going to do it with a clean spoon. All right, so I'm just dipping my spoon down in there, let it run off, and I'm going to put a drop in the water. All right, now we're going to find out. So if you can pick it up, and it's hard. See, that's really, well, I don't know if you can see that or not. There, can you see that? It's hard. Okay, so this is ready. So we're going to go ahead and turn our burner off. We've got our egg whites already beaten. Now you want to take that spoon you tested with and put it to one side. Start out with a clean spoon. All right, we're ready. So I've got my two egg whites already beaten to soft peaks. Now, this is going to be noisy, but I want you all to see all this. So I'm going to go ahead and start beating. All right, I'm going to be pouring this uh, syrup in, in a real, real fine stream into the eggs as I'm beating them on high. All right, so keep watching.
our vanilla in, and then we're going ahead and beat this for several more minutes, and we'll be back. Okay, this mixture uh, now is getting a little thicker, and that syrup has really completely cooked all the egg whites, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's still very, very hot. So I'm going to stop the beating process now. So I've already put the vanilla in, and uh, at this point, you want to just kind of see when it starts trying to hold its shape. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the one and a half cups of uh, toasted pecans. Just dump those in. Now things start getting difficult now. So this is the time to go ahead and dump it in a butter. I use a Pyrex plate. Now it starts getting really hard here, so you have to act quickly and dump it in. Now the bowl is very hot. And it starts get, this is why I don't make it very often because it starts getting really hard fast. You have to really watch it. Let's see if I can get that off that spoon. Using another spoon. See how hard it is already? All right, I'm going to try to spread this out a little bit. It also somewhat loses its gloss. Now, this is why I don't uh, drop mine in the dollops. You'll see people drop it in dollops on uh, wax paper. That's way too hard for me. I don't like to do that because it always, some of it gets hard and you lose it. Mr. Becky will get to eat this out of the bowl. It's already too hard to come out. And then we're going to let this get uh, hard, which shouldn't take it too long at all. And then we're going to cut it in slices. Now, I cut mine in slices with a razor blade, with a straight edge razor blade, because I want to be able to cut my pecans into and I want it to look nice, you know? All right, so once this gets hard and we're ready to cut it, we'll be back. That shouldn't be too long. Okay, the divinity uh, is somewhat hard. It's still got a little ways to go, but as you can see, someone already has taken out two pieces. But I wanted to show you this. Now, this, see this little piece right here? See, it's looking dull. And this one looks dull. And some of the rest of them still look shiny. That's because they're not fully hard yet. But uh, not to fear because certainly in a couple more hours all the pieces will be ready. Now here's the little problem with Divinity. I'm going to turn this camera around and talk to you a minute. Hold on. When you're making the Divinity, there's a, just a fine line between when it's ready to be you know, taken out of the pot and when it gets hard. And I've actually had it get hard in the pot, so we had to eat it with a spoon, you know, just kind of digging it out of the pot. Um, it will get hard, it, I promise you, it will. And today, I mean, it's rained yesterday, and it's rained all day today, and you see I've still got some of the pieces that have already gotten hard. Um, but when, when I take it out with a spoon and dollop it on, uh, like wax paper the way most people do. I don't like it that way because then when you go to store it or give it as a gift, some of the little pieces break off. So I'd rather just pour it all in a, just a slightly buttered uh, Pyrex dish and cut it in squares because if you're giving it as a gift, it just looks better that way. But anyway, uh, never to fear. It will get hard, I know. Uh, some of these pieces in the dish are hard already and some of them are. Now I want to show you another little trick I use. I actually cut these pieces, or at least I started out cutting the pieces, with, with a razor blade. 
And the reason I do that, just a straight edge razor blade, this is the kind you get to scrape your windows after you paint, you know. Usually you get them, it, it actually get them in the paint department. And uh, I just, I cut them with the razor blade or a super, super sharp knife because that way I can cut through the uh, pecan pieces and it'll, you know, it'll look like a clean cut. Anyway, that's just a little tip, and you do have to be really careful when you're using one of these. It's, it's a, the type of razor blade that's just got one side sharp, and I just hold it and cut through it like that, and it just it, it works out pretty good because then it looks good. Now, another thing about Divinity that you can do, and I've done this before, is you can add, uh, instead of adding pecans, you can add some candied fruit like the candied cherries or the, the um, pineapple. They both do really well. And on one occasion, I actually did maraschino cherries because I actually like them better than the candied cherries. And um, just cut them in half and kind of, you know, get the dampness away from them with like a paper towel or something. That works great too. But anyway, the standard way would be with pecans, southern pecans, and you want to toast them a little bit before so that you get that real strong pecan taste. All right, so that's about it. And um, I, I'm just going to call this Bucky's Divinity. That's what I'm going to call it, okay? All right, see y'all next time.